you are never getting that from a takeaway. That is really taking things up a notch. I think I actually prefer that. Extremely not nutritious. <laughs> Hey everyone, it's Barry here. Hope you are well. Do you know what prawn toast is? Or maybe you call it shrimp toast. Or you might call it sesame toast. But you know what I mean, that sort of triangular toast that you get as an appetizer uh, when you get a Chinese takeaway or indeed eat inside a Chinese restaurant. And it tends to be by the time it gets to you, especially takeaway, like soggy and greasy and like ugh, and sometimes cold. And actually some people don't realize that prawn toast, I'm sorry, I'm just gonna call it prawn, all right? Is basically a bread with a homemade kind of paste that you make yourself and blend up and flavor to your liking on top. In fact, when you get the takeaway one, you tend to get like a really thin layer of bread and sometimes just sesame seeds. So how much of that paste are you getting? So by making your own from home, it could be rather stonking indeed. In fact, if this works, I'd like to raise a toast or a pug. We raise a pug? Well, I have raised. I have raised you, haven't I? I've had you since a puppy. So if this works, it should be Flavor Town. It should be fresh. There should be this ability to customise it. You could even use super chunky bread if you want. I've got a few different options here. Let's get cracking. We'll make that prawn paste with haste. <laughs> Let's go. You might be able to hear the gentle humming of what sounds like a constant tumble dryer in the background. Uh, but my neighbor's just having their patio clean, so that's cool. Uh, when it comes to prawns or shrimp, we've got two varieties here. Now, generally, these are the ones that we tend to buy way more often, but these are already cooked prawns. In fact, you can literally eat them. Uh... Wow, that tastes really weird. I <laughs> brushed my teeth like 20 minutes ago. So these are the more common ones. You can eat them straight away out of the pack. They're basically cooked peeled prawns. But you can buy ones that have been still sort of prepared other than cooked. So the shell has been removed, etc. Here, these are raw prawns and the obvious thing to look out for is the complete difference in color. So to make this possible, we want to cook it. Okay, so we need raw prawns. Which is good for Boston because he likes the uh, cooked ones, don't you? Along with the prawns, uh, we have got some uh, spring onions, garlic, ginger, dark soy sauce, sugar, coriander, and this is one egg white, which will hopefully bond and give it a little bit of pop as well. And of course, this is all gonna go in with the prawns into a blender and whiz up, so we only need to really chop it quite rough. All right, so we've got our whizzy blender thing, uh, Ken. So I've just put the prawns in because that might look like it's full, but once we whiz this up, there should be space for all the other bits and uh, I've got to wash my hands. <laughs> All right, beautiful. So we will now add in. Oh my gosh, I poured some of it on Ken. I have got enough space to get these spring onions in now. I really do need to get a bigger food processor. Oh my gosh, I whizzed that for so, so long. I think the motor was gonna burn out. Oh wow, oh wow, oh wow. I feel like we're making hummus again. Look at that. That is awesome. Hopefully you can see from the texture there, it's generally smooth and quite thick indeed. So if you get to this step and it's quite sloppy and wet, we are gonna chill it now anyway, but that's where you could add in things like the flour just to pad it out and get a bit more thickness. Because remember, you need to be able to spread it and it not completely droop off, which is possibly what the takeaways do. Or maybe they just don't put much on at all because it's very expensive. Hmm. All right, so whoa, magic cling film appears out of nowhere. We chill this in the fridge for uh, about half an hour. So whilst that is chilling, we have got some white bread here and we are just gonna remove the crusts. Now this is up to you. Sometimes people cut them into triangles now or they dollop the filling on, cook it and then cut it. I'm actually gonna slice mine now. It's completely up to you. In fact, you know what? I might do one of each, why not? The other thing I thought I'd do was get more of a sort of sweetened bread. This is a brioche bun, so quite buttery, and I bought a sesame one intentionally. So we can take one half of this, and I'm actually gonna like give it a little bit of an indent, like sort of cup it to become its own holder where the filling will sit inside. So it's actually gonna potentially be double sesame. Uh, this is just a bit of fun I wanted to do. <laughs> You're not gonna be seeing this at your Chinese takeaway, but I just thought, hey, Made it into like a bit of a mushroom cup, somewhere to hold some of that paste. So we might as well have some fun with that. Plus, we're gonna oven it and air fry it, but we'll do a good old fryer first. Speaking of which. So Tuck is warming up. This is just a standard slice of bread. You could get some really nice, thick, chunky bread if you wanted. You know, like that proper doorstep bread. You're cool completely and it could look absolutely awesome. So a little brush of sesame oil all over. Like Bob Ross, 
So here we go, we have got our paste. I might have to use this quite sparingly because of how much I'm trying to do today. I'm probably just gonna use this one triangle actually because I really wanna try this brioche one. <laughs> and then we just give it a little brush with an egg wash on top. And now we shimmy sesame seeds on top. Almost let it completely cover that paste, okay? Oh! In it goes. After about 90 seconds, we'll flip it over and cook the other side. Like so, okay, so it's just lightly golden right now, and that is where it's cooking the paste upside down now. It is probably better out of the two to cook with the paste in the oil first, so it sets and firms up, which is the opposite to what I just did, but um, we kind of got away with that. Not sure if you can even hear me from the sound of the oil and the um, patio being cleaned, but um, it smells brilliant. Ah. Yeah, that one's puffed up massively. Like the topping's like wanting to explode off of it. You are never getting that from a takeaway. Oh my gosh, yeah. It's like a whole meal, that one, look. <laughs> That's outstanding. It looks a little bit like the elephant man's head. I think I'll definitely stick to a piece of bread going forward though, because that way you've got a much more even spread on it. I was struggling with the triangle a little bit and that had a nice even coverage, so can definitely see why now. So at least when you've got a standard slice of bread, you can smooth it out, get it nice and thin, and a much more consistent topping. Let's get the brioche in and taste these while they're still warm, and then we'll play around with the air fryer and the oven versions. So there we go, it's not something you see every day. A few seeds come off, standard. In it goes. Looks like I'm throwing some sort of weird sesame burger. I sort of am. Ooh. That is looking cheeky. That is really taking things up a notch if we've made that work. <laughs> Let's taste them. Ooh, but you've got almost like a pie. Ow, still warm. Deep fill, prawn filling, flavor town. Look at it though, folks. I have never assessed prawn toast so much in my life. Um, I could probably got about 90% coverage there. There's a few little spots, but you've got this big, puffy center. You can see the layer of the filling in there. You are never gonna get that from your standard Chinese takeaway. Normally it comes and it's like as flat as the bread and you're just like, oh, is that just sesame toast because there's just sesame on it. I blooming hate fried bread normally, but when it comes to prawn toast, I normally love it. So um, let's try it. Mm. Wow, that is cheeky. I wanna put a bit of lemon in it. When you have prawn toast, you do get that sort of band layer of the prawn. With this, it is massively enhanced. It's like, it's like an entire wedge of the prawn layer just right in there, and the sesame seeds almost become the bonus there, whereas the focus is right on that. The crunch was amazing. Mmm. Oh, that is good. Mmm. That's a good theory of it, actually. Just having it as a bucket and getting a much more dominant filling. Wow. Maybe if there's any Chinese takeaways like watching, just use burger buns rather than brioche ones. That is incredible. You're getting that whole raft of it in there. I don't think the fact that it's brioche matters that much. It's just a little holster for it, isn't it? But what you need to remember though is that it is fried and extremely not nutritious. <laughs> But if you're gonna eat it and it's gonna be a little bit unhealthy, you might as well try and add a bit more depth to it, which is exactly what that does. I'm over the moon with that. But we didn't get all dressed up for nothing. We've made that paste. Let's try it in an air fryer. I now feel like I'm actually in a Chinese restaurant. <laughs> Incredible. But I wanna see if we can get it healthier and if that makes a massive difference, you know? So let's go. All right, so this is that bread slice we had earlier when we did the triangle. Uh, I'll spread that on as even as I can. Um, we've got the air fryer base uh, and obviously the ventilation holes. We're going to only put one piece on so it should get nice circulation. All right, in it goes. It's hottest setting. So 200C for about eight minutes. I've got slight high hopes for this. Just editing that video and it is from this moment on that you can now refer to me as sesame seed head. Yep, that's staying there. Okay, can you see? Let me just tilt that straight out. Oh my gosh. Ah, oh, that's a good chance to see in the bottom of it. That is warm and slightly fried, air fried. I've got to say though, visually, this is the one done in the fryer. You can see 
the golden brown frying on there, whereas this is a little bit more toast-like, and I'm not against that. Ooh, hopefully the microphone picked that up, and not the sound of a high-power jet pressure washer thing. Oh, a much more fragrant smell, actually, with that. That's actually remarkable. With this one, you just get like this overall fried thing, maybe because it's been completely submerged in the oil, whereas this one's just been effectively sprayed. So the actual middle, which is cooked and puffed up again amazingly, has maybe stayed much more true to itself. You are getting those real spring onion scents in there, actually. Whoa. Oh my gosh. I think I actually prefer that. That has got the textures of the ginger, the spring onion, the garlic, all running through it, but it's not overpowering. You still get that same kick. And I think the sesame seeds this time help support that. And you still get this lovely puffy raft of the prawns. Mm. It tastes lighter and way, way healthier, which obviously means I can eat all of it. <laughs> like genuinely, that is brilliant. Yeah, so we're gonna try the oven. Uh, and I think what we're finding here is the key is heat, okay? Speed and heat. Uh, the air fryer was on its hottest temperature. The oil was obviously extremely hot. The oven, I'm getting it up to 220 C. So it's just slightly warmer than the air fryer. The bad news for me, I've probably only got enough paste left over to do one bit of bread, but I've got two ideas for it. So we're gonna have it. Now I wasn't gonna do this before, but it's the air fryer that's made me think about it, all right? Because effectively, the air fryer didn't get submerged and cook. You know, the bread, the filling was sat in the air fryer on untoasted bread, right? So we're gonna keep one to one side. This one, because it's gonna get toasted in the oven, we're gonna just char one side with a pan. So nothing too crazy, but obviously when it's in the oven, that side is gonna get covered by the paste. So we kind of wanna give it a nice little crunch, a bed to sit on. So I'm hoping we get one with a supreme crunch and one a bit softer, both made slightly healthier. But either way, I am so impressed, like so impressed with that air fryer version. So remember folks, the toasted one is on the left. 10 minutes. Can you see? the charring on that bread. The sesame seeds have stayed kind of bland, but the filling has puffed. I'm gonna let it cool down. And it's, is it bizarrely smells healthy. Right, here we go. This knife has cut through some very different prawn toast today. So this is the untoasted in the pan, just straight bread right in there. Ooh. And most of the crunch is coming from that deep brown bottom. Look at that. And this is the one where we toasted it already. Ooh, not a massive difference. Gotta be honest though, I love the color on that. That's fried, that's air fried. And the oven actually looks like more <laughs> fried than the air fried. All right, so untoasted, uh, just like the uh, air fryer version. Mmm, again, you are getting all of that flavor. It's not been submerged and drenched in oil and fried to like obliteration. The puffage is there. There's kind of like a moisture to it as well. That is delicious. And I quite like the softness as I bit into it where we didn't hit potentially what we might have forced into this one. Mmm, you can tell we've done it. It's got a little bit more texture to it, but it's not absolutely critical. That is really, really good, but it doesn't actually taste like prawn toast anymore. It's got, it's, it's almost turned into like much more flavor profiles of like a, a complex meal or something like that. Rather than like the air fried and the fried version feeling like, yeah, this is just like bread with prawn on it, but the flavor profile like the air fryer is there in the oven, but it just feels so much like lighter. I think out of the three, I prefer the air fryer one the most because it tastes the most similar to how I want it to be. But the oven one worked an absolute charm as well. With both of those, you really taste that topping for that classic taste, but the homemade vibe with a much more puffier topping and you don't mind the friedness. This works so well too. So it's completely up to you. I would definitely, if you have an air fryer, go for that. If you want the healthier version, go for the oven or if you want a classic fake away, go for the fried. This was really, really fun. See you later. This is a bit of nostalgia while it does cool. You might remember there's this thing called toast toppers in the UK. 
it was around like the 90s, you'd get a slice of bread and you would spread it on, there'd be like different fillings, there'd be like a chicken and bacon one, something like that, and then you would put it under your grill. So in America, that'd be a broiler, right? So that from the heat is from above, so it would char the topping and set it on there and toast it onto the bread and sort of embed it onto the bread. That's sort of like minus the sesame seeds, what we've just done there. They were amazing, those things. 